Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part 9 of our series on making modular textures in Unity. So in our last video, we figured out how to solve for if the uh, sizes of our layers were different from one another and how to make that not crash our program. Um, this time I want to take a look from, instead of our textures, move over to this color array we have and solve a couple of issues there because we're, we're assuming a couple things right now with our program. The first thing is that the number of textures and the number of colors we have are the same. Um, if we if we have more te more color textures, that's not really an issue. It just won't address them. However, if we have less, if we have fewer uh, color layers, then we're going to start. We're going to have that outside of an array exception again, and the program is not going to be able to work. So I want to solve for that. Um, the other thing I want to look at is we, we're kind of assuming, like I said, in, when we talked about the color application uh, process that the alpha of each of these color layers is one and the reason for that is that if it's less than one right now what's going to happen is we're going to have some weird effects these sort of um, we're going to make things a little bit more transparent than they should be uh, because it's going to be applying that color uh, layers alpha so i want to fix that i want to make it so that no matter what we have that alpha set as um, it's actually going to treat it as if it was one so that we're not losing um, not losing opacity from that color layer. So let's jump into uh, Mono Develop and take a look at these solves. Okay, so we're going to jump down to where we would apply our color layer to our pixels, which is right here. And currently we're just checking is the pixel black and is the pixel completely transparent. Um, making sure neither of those are the case. I'm going to check one more thing here now. We're going to add another and, and we're going to check if i is less than layer colors dot length. Layer colors being the array of colors that we're applying to each layer. Um, so basically what this is saying is that as long as we're less than, that means that we're within that array. So if we go beyond that, then we no longer need to do this, uh, call this function. So we're not going to try and call a layer color that isn't in existence. As we see now, we have these five layers here. So once we get to this, um, this fourth element, we can make sure we don't have to call into the color array because there isn't a fourth element there. So let's hit play and make sure that works. And sure enough, we get these first three layers with the kind of cut their uh, green, yellow, and blue colors applied, but then we see the top two layers that don't have any color application to them. So now the next problem that I wanted to discuss was what happens when we make, say, this first layer half transparent. If I hit play now, what we'll see is that that becomes a ghosted layer, and that's because, um, like I said, we, we're assuming how our uh, color application works, we're assuming that all of these color layers are 100% um, opaque. They, they, um, they work on applying the color, but they don't have any logic as to applying an alpha level to them. And it actually creates a little bit of, if you looked there, um, some fragmenting and some artifacting around some of the curves as well, which we really don't want. So. How we're going to fix this is we're, we're really assuming we want these color layers to be 100% alpha. They're fully applying their color. So we're just going to do a quick check and um, if a color layer is not 100% alpha, we're going to reset it to be so. So how we're going to do this is we're going to jump back into Mono Develop, And similarly to how we kind of created these adjusted layers for um, our textures, we're going to do something similar, but we're not going to create a whole new um, array. We're just going to adjust the existing color array. So how we're going to do that, we're going to say set each color layer to alpha 100% if it isn't already. So we're going to say four. Oops, um, I equals zero, and then layer colors dot length because so we don't need to go beyond the array and we're going to say if come on layer colors i 
if the alpha of the current layer color we're looking at is less than one, then we need to set layer colors i dot a, or sorry, we can't act we can't actually just set a because um, colors are kind of a protected struct and you can only you can get any value from them, but you can't set them um, individually. You have to create a new color and drop that in instead. So we're going to say layer colors that I equals a new color and that color is going to be layer colors I dot R layer colors I dot G layer colors I dot B and then one. Um, when you're not dealing with decimal points, you don't have to have this F, but I tend to include it just for safety's sake to make sure that we know we're talking about a float. But that's kind of a personal preference thing there. So now what should happen is even though this is about a 50% transparency, we should now, if I hit save here and hit play, it still remains 100% transparent. So that pretty much brings this series to a close. Um, some next steps that you can take with your um, procedural texture process now. Um, first step I would definitely recommend is trying to um, pass in the parameters from an, from another class instead of you know doing this all within the texture maker or sprite maker class. Um, try passing it in from a game manager or from a player avatar class or maybe some kind of database that you have of um, textures and colors. Uh, another thing you can do is try making a sprite sheet that's customizable where you're you know, layering different sprites on top of one another. For example, if you have a player that gets a new set of armor, adding that armor to his sprite or um, even creating completely procedural enemies for something like a roguelike where your dungeon is going to change every time and you're going to be dealing with different enemies every um, run of the game. Um, another cool thing you can do because um, is to use the alternative uh, parameters for get pixels and set pixels where you're taking in that X and Y and the width and height and using that to do something like create a uh, custom map for your games where you know if there's a mountain in a specific region you can kind of add a map add a mountain icon to that map um, in that spot so that as the player explores their world more they're really getting this custom uh, textured map that is unique to their world. Uh, finally, one of the now that you kind of understand how textures work, especially in terms of X and Y and their positions, um, and how it's basically you're dealing with a coordinate grid, um, you can actually this is a really good stepping off point to start learning about shaders because shaders are really a similar idea. Just instead of working with the coordinates of a single texture file, you're dealing with the coordinates of your player's entire screen. Um, I would recommend uh, making stuff look good in Unity. Um, is another user who does a really good intro series. I'll put a link uh, here in the video um, as a good, just like a, you know, kind of an in introduction to how to work with shaders. So that's another cool thing that you can get started with now that you have this knowledge in your tool belt. Anyway, this is going to end this video series. Thank you so much for watching and uh, keep an eye out for additional uh, series here at Board to Bits in the future. Thanks for watching.